I ran across an article that I started reading and I'm like, oh, whoa. I thought, wow. And, and I'm excited about it because that's what we're going to talk about. But it's 25 things that are common and less common than normal, they say. Red flags that men want to caution women about, uh, that they want to warn other single ladies about. And, and the things that they say is that if they do this, if you see this, it's time to bounce. And so one of the very first ones, and it says, and, and I like this, don't trust a man who can't joke about others. Okay, who can joke about others but can't take it. That means that they can sit there and joke about other people, but they can't take it. So I'm gonna skip over Byron. I'm gonna go to you, Bree. Yes, I, I test whoever I am dating with how serious they can be, how comical they can be, and how much they can take. So if you throw some sarcasm my way, I'm gonna throw it right back to you. Like we go bounce off of each other with the sarcasm, but if, you start doing it and then I'm going back to you and then you start to witch out. <laughs> it's like, okay, you dish out and you harsh on other people. You're trying to do it with me. Like, I'm gonna throw it back. I'm not gonna be submissive and let's take it. <laughs> so yeah, no, I, I do not like that. When you start being rude to other people or being sarcastic or whatever and they throw it right back to you and you're just scared. That's mm. no foundation. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right, Byron, I, I like, I always watch you, Byron. When you look up like this, you're thinking. Now, Byron, have you experienced that with women? Because I like what Michelle said in the very beginning. She definitely. Talked about definitely. The list. Have. It's men, men and women. Talk to me about women oh, yeah. that you've experienced this with. How do they respond? Uh, um, and, and probably more so than not, because, see, I, I you know, I, I, I've been, it, it's like an art form for me, being able to tease and pick, pick on someone. You as my sister, you know that I can I can tease like nobody's business. Um, but I, you know, for me, I say I can get away with it because I can love just as hard. But um, I absolutely have gotten in trouble um, with uh, teasing with someone that um, might feel comfortable doing, you know, teasing me, so to speak, because I'm really receptive to it. But um, um, but I've gotten in trouble with basically doing in kind right back with them because. I'm going to always, it's kind of like the game where you always try to be on top. I'm going to always, you know, try to outdo them. So I get in trouble with that approach sometimes. I don't, I don't believe in losing when it comes to talking smack, you know, and, and it is talk, and it can be talking smack sometimes. So. All yeah. right. So let's go to another one. Um, man, this is a good one. I'm going to read the question first. When you have to cater to his needs and wants over your own with no compromise, it can be something like only watching shows that he wants to watch, only doing things that he wants to do, or only ordering takeout with what he likes. Uh, Michelle, have you experienced that before where you've dated somebody where it was all about them? I'm very much so guilty of finding myself in relationships where that happens. And it kind of becomes all about the person and you kind of lose yourself. Um, I can admit that my marriage ended up becoming that way. And it's almost like as a woman, and then kind of based off biblical values a little bit, you feel obligated. You feel like as a woman and as a wife, this is what I am supposed to do. Um, and I think there's a way that you just have to create balance with it and not be over consumed because I do believe that you should be supportive and you should be that hope and support the vision and be a part of that. However, there's a certain amount of free will and individuality that has to be established to me to create a healthy balance with it. Mm -hmm. It took a long time for me to recognize that. And there definitely was the guilt tactic being used as this is the reason why you should be this way. Hmm. Wow. Okay, I think you're touching on something that is so awesome. And I love that you took it beyond single in the city to married in the city, you know, which we are going to cover that as well because it starts with the dating. 
you know, and, and that's kind of where those signs maybe were there, you know, during that time. But then during that blissful state of dating, you maybe ignore it or you think it's gonna get better or you hope that it's gonna get better. And so did you see those signs when y'all were dating? I didn't, it was more so of a, we're building together. Oh wow. And there was this vision and we were both in agreement with it. Um, and that just became our lives to where the things I used to do, people I used to hang out with, interests that I had, eventually over time, I kind of lost those interests. I think this is a place where you guys that have been listening to my podcast know that I've been speaking about this, about being about yourself, not to the point of selfishness, but putting yourself as a priority, uh, being true to yourself, loving yourself, because it really should be two pieces coming into one. Um, it really should be about two people that are individuals being able to come together to click in, not one having to lay down their whole life and who they are for the other. And, and that's where we start to get into toxic relationships. We start to get into codependency relationships um, that can be really detrimental. And boy, is it a ground for starting of narcissistic relationships that can just be deadly, actually. And so now let's go to the next one. This is Bucky Goldman who says that ladies or even men, beware if you're dating somebody, and this is what they said, if anything happens to them, they always shift blame to someone else, to something else or the situation. That is a big red flag. Sooner or later, everything will be your fault. Now, Michelle, I see you shaking your head. Girl, look inside like, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna let you go first on this one because that one hit home, I can tell for you. Yeah, that's a huge, huge, huge red flag um, for me at this stage in life, especially when it comes to dating. Um, it's kind of just a rule I use all over with interaction with people in any type of interaction, but especially as it pertains to dating, um, there has to be accountability. I feel like not being able to admit your fault prevents any leeway of any type of restoration, building any type of trust, um, being able to repair whatever the issue is, if you're not account taking accountability for the mistakes that you've made. Um, I literally can't deal at all, not even on the smallest level <laughs> with it. You have to take ownership um, of the mistakes and the things that you've done. So it's a huge red flag for me, not wanting to take, um, accountability and making excuses instead which i think it's it's definitely important to identify like you can have an excuse the reason for why the behavior exists or but to only leave it there and then not move forward in it you can't just stay in the realm of making excuses for behavior mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i like that a lot and do you find that in those moments when you can't deal it brings out a side of you that now, you know, is not even yourself? Or do you just normally retreat and get quiet? Um, no, I used to react, but today I wouldn't. It would just, for me, it's more so, I have this expectation from you because I have it from myself. And if that's what I require, and this is what I would do if I was caught in fault or made a mistake, that's how I would handle it. So if that's how I treat myself, I'm gonna need you to do the same thing. I love that. Uh, let's go on to another one. I'm curious, have you guys ever dated somebody who throws tantrums? When I see a something seven year old man throwing a legit tantrum, knocking over stuff, getting all types of emotional, all of that, it's like, what did your mama raise you with? Like. Mm just let you be so no 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 that's that's a huge flag if you are getting emotionally exterior exteriorly emo you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> if you're showing that and you can't yeah. even calculate it funnel it 
channel it, put a bow on it, wrap it, swallow it, you know, put it, whatever. Then no, you're not, you're not man. As, as Tony Braxton said, you're not man enough for me. If you can't keep your physical tantrum child self locked up in a box to be an adult and communicate, that is poor communication. That is poor time management. Cause now you've wasted my time when here I have a child who doesn't throw tantrums and you're a grown man throwing tantrums. I could talk all day on this topic. When I read this, this was actually the moment that I said, I feel attacked because that out of all my relationships, this is one of my relationships is the biggest one that there were legit grown man tantrums. And all I would do is walk away. <laughs> so any woman who sees a tantrum. That's a good one. Pack up your stuff. Let them kick and scream, knock over stuff, hoop, holler, cry in the bathroom, whatever. Boo boo, go get a bag. Come back for your stuff the next day. All right, this one is bigger. It says when he or she looks to you as their sole source of happiness and entertainment, this usually means that they lack the ability to manage their own emotions or have healthy coping mechanisms. In addition, if you are in it for the long term, there will be times that you will get sick of each other and a guy or a girl needs some hobbies that can take his attention away to give you space basically they're all up in your grill you are their source for everything they cannot function without you can't do anything without you you are their source that if they're not happy you're the one that's got to make them happy okay Bree, i'm coming to you when you become the person's source, it's like, okay, when are you gonna become my source? And you start kind of going to that, fill your own cup before you can spill into others. If I'm supposed to be Betty Crocker, Pamela Anderson, <laughs> Beyonce, <laughs> Beyonce on five levels and all of this, then where are you gonna feed into me and be Ken Doll <laughs> and Cristiano Ronaldo and Jay-Z money, when are you gonna start being all of that for me? And I can't be happy cheery if you're not giving me anything to be happy cheery about. I can't be entertaining if you're not giving me anything to be entertained for. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you're at a blank and you don't have any sense of where you want your emotions or where you want your next move to come from until I give you guidance, then where are you pulling me for a direction forward? Where are you really pouring into me to direct me on what I want to do next, where I want to go eat, where I, where movie I want to go watch, what mood I want to be in. Oh, do, do I have to tell you every single next move? Yes. Mm, single in the city is even harder today than it was back in the day. I mean, it sounds old, but it is. You're dealing with more, more things in a relationship um, than you've ever had to deal with. And I am meeting more people that I'm coaching that are becoming more individualist uh, just because they did give a lot. Um, they have been hurt a lot. Uh, and the things that they've experienced in dating, you know, were things that really took them for a loop. And a lot of times the people that I'm coaching, they didn't just go through it once. They went through it multiple times. And as I told them in coaching sessions, it's because they have a beautiful heart to not give up on love. They have the ability to give love no matter what, uh, that they believe in people. Because a lot of times that's what you do when you start a relationship, you're believing in that person. You're not just giving them your heart, it's because you believed in them, you're giving them your heart and that you're entrusting them with you and your life. And so when we have relationships that, um, or we're dating people where we do come to the day where we realize we've done all of this and we have to wake up because man, so many things can happen in the relationship that you don't even realize the truth. And then you wake up, you know, with that reality that you now have to accept and what it makes you feel like when it's been two, three years or 10 years or 20 years you know, it can knock you to your knees. It can affect you even when it comes to that next relationship. Hey, superheroes, it's TA, your entrepreneur coach. So excited you were able to join me again today for another empowering superhero video.
And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like and share the video. And turn on that notification so that you never miss another episode. And I look forward to seeing you again as we suit up to unleash the superhero within for victory.